can snow. Welcome to Drive Building One, how to get your dog crazy about hunting. This is uh, the first exercise that I do in class, and even though uh, a lot of my other training has changed over the years, this has remained the same. I haven't found a better way to get a dog uh, super excited about hunting uh, than this, and is, I can't reduce it any simpler than this. And uh, we'll go through each step and why I do it the way I do it. And also, if you have a dog that's already on odor, uh, don't just click away. This is for you as well. You would be surprised how valuable it can be to go back to the foundation and do some of these exercises with odor, obviously not with food. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, and w exactly what is it about this that, that builds the dog's drive and builds the dog's hunting uh, ability. Uh, so I want to point out a couple things. The first thing is that I've uh, assumed for the sake of this video that you don't have a training partner. And uh, so that's one way that this is different than the way I would normally do it in a class. In a class, I would have the handler holding the dog and I would be uh, uh, jazzing the dog up. Uh, but today I don't have a training partner. So instead, I've made myself a little tie out here on the car uh, just by slipping a leash around that bar. Uh, so that I can tie my dog out between runs and I have acted as the uh, kind of a agitator, if you will, from protective sport. It's not really an agitator, but the person whose job it is to make the dog excited about hunting uh, and the handler at the same time. Uh, now, uh, some of you might wonder, why not just put the dog in a down or a stay? Uh, and there's a couple reasons. One is because I don't want the dog suppressing any of their hunting drive in exchange for obedience. Uh, this is the one area that I really want the dog to be getting as excited as possible. And so by tying them out, I can allow the dog to express as much exuberance as possible without worrying about myself or the dog busting out of it before I'm ready for them to search, that kind of thing. Now, uh, another thing that's worth, worth mentioning is why do I want the dog to get super excited? Well, I want the dog to get excited because uh, for a couple reasons. One is because the more enthusiastic the dog, the better they do at nose work. But secondly, the more enthusiastic the dog, the tireder they will get. So if you have a pet dog and you've come to this because you want a tired dog at the end of the day, you want your dog putting every ounce of energy they have into this activity. You want them holding nothing back. So at the end of five minutes, this actually the searching took, uh, I think, seven minutes. After seven minutes, the dog is out for the rest of the day. The dog I'm running this with is a very exuberant young golden doodle, and he is just uh, wiped. Actually, Aussie doodle. Um, he is wiped. He is asleep right now and, and uh, be after seven minutes of training, which is uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the dog's name, just so you know, is Buster, and you're going to see him in a second here. He's never done nose work before in his life. This is his first exposure to it. And... Uh, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is see that he's hungry. And this I can't stress how important this step is. I want to make sure that he's willing to take treats from my hand and from the bucket. Uh, part of the reason I want the dog to take the treats from the bucket is to make sure the dog's not afraid of the bucket. Um, I use these metal buckets here that I buy from Lowe's in the paint section or something like that. Um, and you don't have to use paint buckets. The reason I use them is because where I live, the wind will blow these away. Uh, if they're um, if they're cardboard boxes or if they're flower pots or something like that, but you can use anything you want. I think the metal buckets work really nicely for what I do. Um, so Buster's a young uh, young doodle, and he never has done nose work before, like I said. Uh, and he's got some food uh, allergies, so he has to be on a very specific diet. So for that reason, he doesn't always show the highest amount of focus and drive, and that's something that I'm thinking about when I'm working him. Um, and you'll see that I get him excited about eating out of the bucket. I'm not going to train the dog if he's not focused on the food. And you can see right now he's not showing me a lot of focus. So I was a little worried. I was like, oh, maybe he's not going to take to this. Um, but eventually he does. He eats out of the bucket. And I'm like, okay, it's time to begin. I would not start until the dog was able to focus on eating first. If this was uh, if went on and the dog was distracted the whole time, then I would have not fed the dog and brought the dog out in a couple more hours. And I would repeat that process over and over again until the dog was hungry enough to focus on the food. So now I decided to repeat that because I wasn't convinced. So I throw some more treats in. Now here he's doing obedience. He's like, oh, I'm not supposed to eat it. So that's that's uh, cute. Not what I was asking for, though. Uh, so now 
at this point, I'm satisfied. Okay, the dog's willing to eat out of the bucket. It's time to begin. So I hook my dog up to my tether. Um, it's important that when you hook a dog up to the tether, don't surprise them. So I brought him to the end of the tether so he doesn't spring out and hit it hard. I want him to know, you're tied out. I don't want him to be surprised. Uh, so I leave the camera uh, and I go get food. And when I get the food, I get the dog excited. I tease him with the food. I put let him see me putting it in the bucket. And I have a long line on him and I tell him search. Okay. Now it's his job to find it. I am not going to help him. Can you do this off leash? Absolutely. Why did I do it on leash? I did it on leash for two reasons. One, I'm an experienced handler. I know how important leash handling is going to be. And I know that I'm not going to be tempted in the slightest to help him find the hide. I'm just going to stand there and let him work it out. Also, for the video, I wanted to keep him in frame. All right? So, so that was part of the choice of why I went on leash versus off leash. And you have to make that choice when you do this as well. Now, um, what, am, what is my goal for training in this first session? My goal is to get the dog learning that, one, there's something hidden from you and it's your job to find it which he's already figured that out. The second thing is that I am a liar. I just lied to him. I pretend to put it in the first bucket. And I want the dog to learn. If you try to follow me and figure out by watching me where the hide is, you will not find it. And the dog does just well. He checks the first bucket, but then moves to the second bucket. Um, I really want as early as possible for the dog to realize that the handler is going to be of no use to me when I'm doing nose work. I have to do this all on my own. It also helps the dog learn to search in a sequential manner. So even though I'm not worried about patterns at this stage, the first thoughts the dog's having about nose work is to check each bucket sequentially, which is not a bad thing for them to think going into the future. Uh, this process of pretending to hide things through the search is one of the single most important exercises you can do with your dog and if you ever see to see your dog's drive drop you might want to return to this and let your dog see you running around the search area hiding so now i've put it in the third bucket but i've pretended to put it in one and two and you can see i'm not helping the dog that i'm just basically following the dog and i'm praising the dog this is the most important part is praising the dog and really praising them and i'm petting and i'm kind of pushing the dog a little bit um Part of what I want is when the dog finds the food, I want the dog to be used to and comfortable with me approaching and touching the dog so that when uh, the dog finds odor, they'll wait for me and uh, they'll be okay with me reaching in with a treat and not try to avoid me, not try to escape so I can grab their collar, I can clip them to the leash when I want. The dog doesn't instantly run away when I touch them. So now we're going to do two more repetitions of this first exercise. So now it's going to be in the fourth can. Notice that I'm always putting the food in the same exact can, and I pretend to put the food in the others. He's, you can see him. He's pulling a little bit, so he's getting much more excited each round. I want to mention also today is an unseasonably warm day, and I'm taking that into account when I see his enthusiasm. I'm looking, you can, so you can see you're, I'm pulling his leash a little bit, I'm stroking him, I'm pushing him. I want to build his drive for that odor, and that's one way to do it. You can see he really wants to keep searching. That lets me know that this is going right. So, he's not a stupid dog. He says, okay, it was bucket one, then it was bucket two, then it was bucket three, then it was bucket four. Obviously, it's going to be bucket five now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put it in bucket one. And this is the first time I'm going to try to take the lead in the search, and I'm going to try to convince the dog to skip number one and go to number five. So watch how I do that. So I don't make a big fuss about putting in number one, but I do make a big fuss. Hey, look, I'm putting lots of treats in this last one. I want him to get real excited about that. And then when I unclip him, I'm going to try to coerce him to going to number five. I want him to learn. Again, I am not reliable in any way. And he followed me, but then he changed his mind. I can't ask for a better a better end to the first exercise. So that took us about five minutes total. The next exercise takes about two and a half minutes. Um, and that's the end of this first exercise. At this point, he had a 10-minute break. A 10-minute break where he just rested in the crate. I went inside. I had a little uh, drink. Uh, I set up this next search area. I already set the hides. Um, 
and I didn't, uh, you know, I just let him rest. That's all I did. Let him think about it. Um, and that's an important part of training. Don't just drill, 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 drill. Give your dog at least as much rest time as they got search time. So, he, like I said, he searched for five minutes. He rested for 10 minutes. Now he's back out. Just so you know where the hides are, there's one hide there uh, under the box in the bucket. This box right here, I mean bucket right here that's tilted upside down, it's under that. And to make it not th so the treats weren't uh, dirty, I put them in a flower pot under that container so he doesn't have to eat straight off the ground. And the last hide is the furthest bucket over here um, in uh, one that's tilted over. Some dogs find that to be a uh, confidence building issue. Uh, so what we have here is a problem solving hide, a confidence building hide, and another problem solving hide. And I'm going to let him off leash this time. I saw a lot of drive and notice that I didn't pretend to hide it this time. I could have. That wouldn't have been a bad idea. Uh, but when I'm testing the dogs, and this is the first exposure to nose work, I want to see after one repetition, what ha has his behavior uh, changed? Is he going to understand that he should go out and hunt? Or is he going to run off into the hills? Uh, there's, you know, two and a half acres here he can run if he wants. And I want to see if he does that. And if he did, I would have waited however long it took. Fortunately for us, he just went right to work. But you have to be willing to be patient and let the dog figure it out on their own. I would have pulled up a chair and a book and sat and waited the whole time, however long it takes. So notice also I'm kicking the dirt here. The reason I do that is to check the wind. I want to know which way the wind's going so I have a good idea of how he's going to solve these problems. The first hide he finds is that one under the bucket, which I was a little surprised about. That's usually a very hard hide. Um, notice that I ran in to uncover it. The reason I did that is because I don't want to encourage the dog to scratch in the search area. That's one of the things that the dogs can get faulted for in competition. And in preparation for that, I avoid any uh, any encouragement of scratching. I just rush right in and open once I felt the dog found it. Um, notice how I'm standing back and letting the dog work independently from me. I'm not going to guide the dog around the search area if I can avoid it. The dog looked at me at that point trying to see if I was going to tell him to do something. I just waited. The dog went immediately to the box, pushed the box over, which is I'm which I'm very happy with. That shows a lot of confidence. There are a lot of dogs who won't do this, even at the higher levels. You'd be surprised. I would highly recommend you do this if you have a dog on odor. Set an odor in a container, put a box on it, and see if your dog just alerts without pushing it over. I think the dog should drive to the source and, and move obstacles in their way to get to the source. And if they can't do that, to me, that's a foundation skill that I would be emphasizing until it was fixed. And now there's one more hide. Now he's looking at me a little bit like, hey, are you going to help me? Over time, I'm going to be monitoring that behavior. I don't want him looking at me at all during the search. So I won't put him on odor until he does this whole search without ever once looking up at me. So you could see he was not the most exuberant dog. He wasn't bouncing or running or anything like that, but he was surely focused. He was hunting very nicely which is all I care about. And the way it looks, and you can see as I'm trying to leave, he's continuing to search. That's beautiful. That's exactly what the way I want to end a lesson is with him wanting to keep searching. Um, so if you, it looks different with your dog because your dog bounces more or your dog uh, you know, works the wind more further out from the buckets, uh, slower, fast, you know, that's an individual difference. All I care about is how focused is the dog on hunting? versus how focused is the dog on me, the handler, or how focused is the dog on the environment. Those are the things I'm looking for. So what would the homework be after this? Uh, the next week or two, what I would be doing is taking my buckets to as many new locations as pro uh, possible and doing this exact setup over and over and over again in new locations. And I would want to go to difficult locations. I'd want to go to grass, to a known potty area, to right outside of my sheep pen, to uh, right outside of the skate park with all skateboarders. And if you go to the park and see a soccer game, I want to set this up right next to the soccer game, right? Uh, so I want my dog to prioritize hunting for its food over any other distraction that might be in the environment, including me. Uh, one of the documents that we'll be releasing soon is our checklist of uh, things that we would like the dog to have searched before we introduced odor. And also it'll include some information about why we introduce the dogs to odor and uh, 
and uh, how to know whether you're ready or not for putting the dog on odor. I think this is a decision that shouldn't be taken super lightly. I know it's just for fun. It's just a sport. But I think in some ways uh, you harm the dog's ability to enjoy it if you go on odor too early. The dog likes hunting for food, but if it's not super focused, why are we introducing odor? It doesn't help the dog. It only makes the owner feel good. So it's only to support our own egos when we put them on odor uh, and to compete, uh, which uh, it'll be explained in the document. That's the main homework. Uh, you can also add to that changing out different types of containers. So you could use shoe boxes and flower pots and uh, even shoes themselves and encourage the dog to hunt in a lot of different environments for longer, for shorter, and with varying distractions, like I said. Uh, this uh, can be, if you did just these two things, you're, you would have a good nosework dog in a few months, uh, assuming there's no digestive problems where the dog's uninterested in food. If the dog's uninterested in food, you have to start there, obviously. Uh, these two exercises that I just did are what I consider to be the most important exercises in uh, nose work. They are the pattern straight row of boxes and the free search. Every exercise you do after this is basically just a variation of these two exercises. When you do a vehicle search, you're just doing straight lines. or And if you do multiple vehicles, it's straight lines and, and uh, free search combined into one. An exterior with multiple hides might be a free search. It, it might be a uh, pattern search. So just keep in mind that every exercise, uh, we want to emphasize a little bit different things. Are we emphasizing today problem-solving ability? Are we emphasizing today a patterned way of thinking? Are we emphasizing today confidence building? Do we want to set up more uh, searches that are going to push our dogs out of their comfort zone? That kind of thing. And so before you ever practice, think about that. What is my goal? and set searches to meet that goal. Don't just set hides and let your dog find them. Uh, that's, I think, uh, just it just doesn't serve any purpose. And make sure that you're tiring your dog out. Get your dog's drive to the maximum possible level so that they run themselves to the ground and get exhausted. And set hides and challenges that are, are challenging for the dog. The dog finds uh, as worthy, um, you know, uh, hunting prey, you know. Uh, so he's sleeping and he's going to sleep the rest of the day and it'll be fun. But tomorrow he's going to have a little more stamina and the next day he'll have a little more stamina. So I'll have to keep upping the challenge as we go on. And that won't be hard. It'll be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to demoing the rest of my introduction curriculum with him for you guys, which I'll do. And uh, I'll potentially even intro him uh, how to start odor. Uh, so uh, ask me any questions you guys have. And I hope you enjoyed watching Buster, the star of the show. Uh, he's also a star tribal dog. I just have to mention that. He's going to be uh, competing soon. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. You said it's time to go. I said, I want to take it slow.